Hello, everyone. Welcome to Chat Channel. My name is Tim Hayden, and I'll be your host. We have a stupendous show for you today. We've named this episode Maturing Famously because we're going to talk about what it's like to age while, while being famous, the struggles, the joys, aging tips, and more. To help me today, I have two iconic women. I'm hoping the third one will join us. I think she's running a little bit behind. Um, but up first, we've got a nurse. She's best known as playing a nurse, Lillian Raines Cooper, Guiding Light. And next is known as Attorney Dee Dee Bannister in The Edge of Night, as well as other roles, both of them other roles. Let me add them to the show here. Hello, ladies. Hello Hello there, Tim. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. As I said, I'm hoping Marie Cheatham will join us here in a little shortly. Um, I hope you are doing well today, both of you. Uh, I am. Hey, listen, (laughs) every day that I get to wake up and take a breath is a good day. (laughs) I have my grandchildren here. and We went this morning and saw their one five and eight, so little tiny puppies that were about three three weeks old. Well, it was the most extraordinary morning. It was Aww. so much fun seeing these little puppies and these little children thrilled to watch them. Oh, Aww. for sure. Puppies are adorable. And puppy breath, you can't help can't help that stinky breath, but it smells so good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so okay. <laughs> just just puppies, not grown dogs. They're, they're breath stink. There's just no Uh-oh. even that. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm eating at the same time because it's lunchtime here. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt your lunch. I'm just thankful that you're both here with us today. I mean, um, well, I guess I'll start out. We're going to be talking about maturing and maturing you guys as celebrities. I mean, you kind of mature in front of everybody. Um, <laughs> yeah, it happens. <laughs> it, ha- it happens. How do you two feel about a, a maturing? I mean, I know you have to do it, but oh, I feel I feel good about it. I feel I feel great. I'm I am um, I I don't know if you had a chance to see. I have a TEDx talk, and I'm a age disruptor for AARP. And I I I think we need to change the paradigm on aging, especially for with women and aging. I think socially and culturally. We've been hypnotized into believing that old is bad and young is good. And that's ridiculous. It's all good. As long as you're here on the planet and you're able to take a breath, it's all good. Now, what what did you say? You have an age disruptor. I'd like to know about that. Oh, I am an um, AARP identified me as an age disruptor. I I do. They sent a camera crew to um, to do a little profile on me. I do stand up. And I just talk about the fact that I actually start with the saying, I, I, I've, I've been a woman in black all my life, but not even that prepared me for the discrimination I would face once I got to be old. And I, it is, it is true. It's, it's, I don't know what happened with you, um, Tina, but after making a really great living as an actress for, you know, 30 years, when I hit my mid fifties, the casting directors just stopped calling. I mean, I, it's like, I, fell off the edge of the planet. And my agent suggested I gain 50 pounds so that I could do more character work, which I thought was really ridiculous. High blood pressure runs in my family. So you're going to add cholesterol to that too? I don't think so. Or possibly diabetes. I don't think so. (laughs) Um, So that's when I became very involved. uh, As a matter of fact, I went to Hypnosis Motivation Institute in Tarzana, California, spent a year in training and became a hypnotherapist because yeah. you know you actors we tend to you know we're curious about human behavior and motivation so I thought well I'll do that but what happened was when I started working with women clients who were late 40s early 50s and the tar- most of them came from the Tarzana area which is a very well-to-do area of, of uh, Los Angeles and they had everything. They had money. They were, you know, they had husbands who were successful. Uh, a lot of them were starting to become empty nesters and they were suffering from depression. 
And that's when I realized that my job was not to hypnotize them, but to dehypnotize them from the trance that we are all in that women lose value and social and sexual currency as we age. And it sort of became my, my, my mission in life to change that paradigm. My very first solo show was uh, at actually in the auditorium at the Institute and it was snap out of it. You've only been hypnotized into believing you're over the hill. <laughs> so, so, and I've just been doing that ever since, you know, they stopped hiring me. So I started hiring myself and started doing solo shows and stand up comedy. I do sp- um, transformational, you know, speaking and talking about that. So as a matter of fact, I'm going to be in Florida uh, this weekend. This weekend coming up. Yeah, in Tampa, um, I'm a speaker at the Association for Jewish Aging Services in Tampa for their annual conference. And I'm talking about women and aging and ageism. Terrific. Yeah, that's my, that's kind of my thing. I forgot to mention that you you have a you do a fabulous job with your aging shamelessly and Tina also has on her uh, social media she does aging tips which are phenomenal so getting you two here is just wonderful I mean because you, you both are the perfect people um, <laughs> perfect people perfect people absolutely <clears throat> do you feel that Tina do you feel that maturing is a negative thing no. Yeah. No, I really don't. And I, I take issue with what you said about um, uh, Maverick. Remember, you you said that she was at, not asked because she was old. She's very heavy now. She has short, dark, white hair. She just doesn't look like the person she would look like, Kelly McGillis. Had she, right. you know. She I mean, said that, not me. <laughs> I was well, I know her. she I did. So I went and looked at her right away. I looked her up right away to see what that meant. And I could see she didn't, wouldn't care. I mean, she sort of cho- chosen a different path, shall we say. And um, so that's what I meant, but I take issue with her s- sort of blaming it on aging. Cause you know, look at Jane Fonda at 85 or whatever she is and looking incredible. I'm 80 and I'm thrilled being 80. Um, it just, and I tell everybody, it's just part of what, what we're doing. I remember Helen Bonham Carter said, it's a crime. It's become shameful to age. So you could stop it. I mean, I thought that was hysterical. And she, of course, fought, fights it too. I mean, as you do, as she, she talks about it and, you know, she doesn't pretend that she's not her age and she's still working all the time. I don't know how old she is. I, I bet she's in her late 60s. 60s. Hel- hmm? Helena Bonham Carter. I think she's like in her 50s. Isn't she 50s? Doesn't make doesn't make any difference. She's well, it does make a difference because there are yeah. certain <laughs> ages. Where, um, see, we look up how old Helen Bonham Carter is. Um, okay, my husband's right there, so I just thought I'd take him to action. Um, you know, 50. I was still doing movies in my 50s, and and I did them. I did them in my 70s. Not a lot, but I was the head of the ballet, and 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 um, I've I've done things, you know. So I don't know. I feel I, I, I'm not worried about it because I live in Florida. So you're not acting a whole lot down here, but I'm writing books instead where the heroine is in her mid 40s and not married and has a child. So, you know, I, I'm sort of making age good, but she's in her late 40s, not just her mid 40s. Oh, there are my books. Ah, thank you. Look at that. 56. She's 56. It- you're right. Helen, and she's talking about age at 56. Wow. Wait till she's 76 or 80. Um, so I, you know, I made a heroine who is an older, older heroine, not the 20 year old heroine. And they've sold really well, as you can imagine, because there are a lot of women in their 40s who want to have a heroine their age, late 40s. Yeah. Absolutely. yeah. And what, what to, so everybody knows what we're talking about with Kelly. Uh, Kelly McGillis uh, from Top Gun said to... She implied to Entertainment Tonight in 2019 when production on Top Gun Maverick was underway that aging is why she wasn't asked back. That's what we were talking about, right. that quote right. from her. Right. Yeah. But then, I just wanted the audience to know what we were talking about when you brought up Kelly. <laughs> oh, Kelly. Oh, I, I, they might have brought her back in a different capacity. You know what? I, I agree with you. I don't know if aging necessarily had anything to do with it. I think sometimes we become our own... Uh, worst enemies when we internalize ageism you know sometimes you know we say oh i'm having a senior moment or it's this that or the other (laughs) thing i think we have to look at 
how we do ourselves in. And by the way, Tina, I started uh, an Instagram campaign called Say Your Age. And it's huh? Say Your Age underscore loud and proud. And I have all these pictures that, because I'm 75. And I believe that we take, you know, that's my handle on Instagram, my personal handle, Marianne Alda underscore aging shamelessly, because we have to take the shame out of aging. And we do that by saying our age and being loud and proud about it instead of being coy. Oh, I'm a woman of a certain age, as if there's something that we needed to hide. Oh, there, look at him. Look, oh, there you go. Very good at this. Wow. Look at it. Yeah, look at it. Guys, don't get, don't get me wrong. This is only the second time I've been able to do the pictures. <laughs> 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 I'm not Thank that good. You. Thank you. Yeah, so. And the, uh, the link to the Instagram that Marie, Mariana is talking about is in our description underneath. It tells you all her links. It's in there, too. Okay. Thank and you, Tim. Thank Thanks, Tim. And Tina's books, there's a link to her Amazon page to but order think, her books. You know, how, do you have tons of people following you on these on these aging things, Mariana? I don't know, Marianne. It's Marianne. And I just I actually just started it a couple months ago. Um, so there are just women who are uh coming on and a lot of times they will DM me and they will say, you know, thank you for doing this because they want an opportunity to say their age and feel good about it. And I think it's really good when you're part of a community, you know, we, we feel that we're a part of something. So I'm trying to, to grow that and make men, uh, women more aware of it because we have a lot of power, you know, there the frontline baby boomers are still around. And then the, the, the uh, what is it? The, the Gen Z, X, Z, Gen, Z. well, the Gen X is coming up. They're in their fifties now. Cause my son is part of Gen X. That's my son me. and I'm my a, daughter-in-law, you, you know? Yeah. I'm Gen X. Gen X. <laughs> it's and, funny you bring that up because they brought that something up today. It was actually on uh, the morning show, CBS morning show. And where the Gen or the millennials are now coming at, at Gen X people saying that we are the real Karens that they've quit coming after the baby boomers. Now they're going after us saying that we were bad parents. I shared the article on my page about it this morning. It, it was crazy. I mean, blaming us for everything, saying everything was our fault. <laughs> I'm glad the baby boomers. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for taking the pressure off us, Tim. Oh, no, no you problem. Know, that, that's, the thing of that, you know, that I think is the, the problem of our time that we we otherize people. You know, we have to look for somebody to blame. We other, but when it comes to getting older, we're all in this together. Actually, when it comes to saving the planet, when it comes to having, you know, peace and and everything in, in the world and, and harmony, we're in this together. There shouldn't be us versus you. I agree. Right. 100%. I find on these aging tips where I've amassed tons of followers just because of the topic, I think. I mean, I think it's over 22,000 in a few months. Oh, wow. That's amazing. That's good. It's just amazing. You brought up I'm one recently. Hmm? I'm sorry. I was going to say you brought one up recently. I didn't know. And it's very important to know. I want you to talk about I think I'll let you know about it. But I didn't mean to interrupt you. I apologize for that. No, please interrupt me. For which one? <laughs> you about? about hearing. Oh, okay. This was something I talked about because I started wearing hearing aids probably five, five or six years ago, because I, I kept saying to my husband, what are you saying? What, 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 what? And then I'd say, could you turn off the TV, please? I can't hear it. And he looked at me and said, maybe you want to go and have your ears tested. So I did. And I went in and the hearing doctor said to me, um, you know, you, you're losing your some hearing and you should get hearing aids. And I thought, and he said, and if you don't, Tina, you'll get Alzheimer's. And I said, pardon me. And he said, all the neurons in your head are trying to hear what people are saying, and they're intermingling the wrong way. And he said, I'm telling you the truth. So I called my doctor in New York. I live in Florida now. And I said, is this true? And he said, absolutely, Tina, go online. So I went online to hearing loss and Alzheimer's. And unless you get hearing aids and get them right away and keep using them. I mean, I, I get up in the morning and I occasionally don't put them in. And my husband will look at me and go, hearing aids because I'm going what 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 um and I wear them all day until I go to sleep at night 
And I almost want to wear them through the night, but you have to charge them. So I do that. But it's a thought that you can stop a part of aging that isn't fun, which would be to get Alzheimer's. And we all can get it. I certainly forget names of people all the time. Um, and I, I just, whenever I see someone and they're not listening I and mean, they're not hearing or they're not part of the conversation, I might say, I think you need hearing aids. And here's my hearing doctor. I should be making money on this. Um, <laughs> oh, here's, uh, I use Lydex, which I happen to use because that's what my hearing aid doctor gave me. But I'm so glad he told me, if he hadn't told me about that Alzheimer's thing, I'm not sure I would have gotten hearing aids. And I put that on as a tip one day, and many people wrote me and said, thank you so much. My husband, it's never them. My husband needs them. <laughs> he won't get them. And But now that I've told him that if he doesn't, he's he is a, he's making himself, you know, his mind's going all in the wrong directions. And so he's not hearing, and he's not also making his mind screwed up. I mean, you That's just saw that. really interesting. It is. I saw it. A lot of that kind of tip. Hmm? My hearing is my hearing's okay, but my biggest fear has always been getting Alzheimer's. Well, everybody. Uh, and and you said that. And I was just like, oh my god, why? I'm almost fifty one in two weeks. I'll be fifty one. Why have I never heard this before? You know. I think a lot of people haven't. And I didn't know, but when I went online, that's where and you just Google it, and it comes up all over the place, and. And I think if the hearing doctors would tell people this and maybe give them a piece of paper with the Google thing on it, they'd believe it, you know, and then they'd go and get them. And then you can go to Walmarts. You can get them anywhere. They're, you don't have to go to a hearing doctor. I like to because when I lost one, they sent me another pair the next day. Um, but many people, you know, you don't want to spend the money. I think there's probably insurance. I'm not sure. I don't think I got insurance. I, I didn't. I didn't no, know. I, I think that's a problem that, that usually is not covered by insurance. I think Green Actors Guild, I think, <clears throat> before they got rid of the older people, as they did, as you know. Yeah. They, yeah. They, they, um, got, they sent us to somewhere else because they knew we were coming en masse and we were going to need a lot of insurance, I think. But we were all thrown out of Screen Actors Guild. And people like Whoopi Goldberg fought it. A lot of people fought it who were big. Ed Asner fought it. Um, yeah, it was a bait and switch because I didn't know about you, but there were times when I didn't make enough coverage during that year. So I was on self-pay because the thing was, if you stopped, you were guaranteed health insurance for life once you reach 65. And you then and then you, then it went away. It went away. And I was in it the whole time because I was on a soap for 30 years, yeah. you know. So I, I had an insurance constantly, but then all of a sudden they took it away. And the minute they said this, I, I went and looked at their alternatives right away to make sure I would be covered by the, the alternatives they gave us. But it's not the same. I loved having Screen Actors Guild and they took care of everything right away. They were great. <laughs> were, I do they? know there are some hearing companies that do give a free basic hearing test. Well, you can get your test for free, but the hearing <laughs> is very expensive. Right. Well, Unless even Costco, Costco and Walmart, I think, have the Sam's. a third or and you can probably pay it in, in short blocks of time. But I think people who don't do that are going to have much more expenses in health care afterward if they lose their hearing. I know our Sam's Club has a hearing little booth for to test hearing and you get your hearing aids there and everything. Oh, that's perfect. That's what we need. They really do. It's on the way out by the service desk. You can just stop there and have your hearing tested. Have you all ever been told that you are too old? You're too old to get to, to do this role, too old you, for any of the parts or anything? I, I don't think I was ever told I was too old. I just wasn't called in anymore. There was no reason that was given. Um, it's just like I said, if, you know, for me, the casting director st stopped calling because Edge of Night was canceled in 1984. And so that's when I moved to Los Angeles and and, you know, I had a great career for about another decade or so, maybe decade and a half. And then it just everything kind of went away. Now, what's interesting. And I think it I, I now that I'm 75 I'm experiencing a renaissance. I've worked more on in film in the last 18 months than I had in the previous two decades, really. And a lot of that had to do with um, 
with the pandemic. I had done my solo show at the National Black Theater Festival in 2019. It got picked up and I did it at the Billy Holiday Theater for a limited engagement in February of 2020. And I was planning on going out to LA and doing it there, but of course the pandemic happened and it shut everything down. And uh, about a year later, a friend of mine who does a lot of voiceovers called me and she said, Have I, there's this thing called Clubhouse. Have you ever heard of it? And I hadn't. And she explained it to me. Are you on Clubhouse, Tina? What is you, Clubhouse? Oh, Clubhouse is an, it's an audio app. I, I, I think of it as kind of a cross between a podcast and a party line. You, mm -hmm. you, uh, there are, it's an app, it's on your phone. And there are rooms you go into and audio, it's like different programs. And then you can come in, you can listen. And then there's a little uh, icon, you can raise your hand, you can come up to the stage, you can contribute to the conversation. And there are uh, all of these, uh, there was a new Hollywood room, all these young to me, they were in their 40s, 30, late 30s, 40 somethings, new Hollywood people. And I would come in and I would introduce myself. And I was in one room and I introduced myself and I, and my typical spiel to all of these young writer, producer, directors was that according to it, and I take this in my TED talk, according to a 2017 survey, federal survey of uh, consumer finances, women control 70% of the wealth in this country and baby boomers uh, contribute like 70% in, into the 75% of discretionary income. I mean, maybe I have it backwards, but it's 70 and 75. And so I said, so when you do not include a nuanced, uh, complicated, engaging older female character, you're leaving money on the table. Well, some of these people heard me and they started writing things for me. And so I you got a DM in my Instagram. We'd love to have you for this part. So I, I went out, I think it's 2021 and did um, a short film that's now on the all black streaming channel. AMC started an all black streaming channel and I did this little short film cup gumbo and I'm getting ready to do um, Oh, let me plug the producer, Gino, Gino Brooks. And Jess Waters was the writer director. Uh, Tamika Briscoe was also a part of that group. And she contacted me a month ago about playing a lead character in this independent film that she's doing as a hot shot she, dynasty type um, media, female media mogul. And um, my, uh, my rival is um, Eric Roberts, who's trying to take my company away from me. So <laughs> here at 75, I get to play uh, this dynamic female character, but who is hiring me are the, you know, the Gen X, the millennials, you know, they call them the geriatric millennials. You know, if you're over like the front end of the millennials, they're, they're hiring me because I find that this younger generation coming up, once they have an awareness of aging and ageism, they look forward because they know they're not going backwards and they want to make getting older look good, you know, because we are already in the world that they are about, about to inhabit and they want to, you know, make sure that there's a place for them when they get there. That sounds like a show, actually. <laughs> well, actually look at that. what James is doing and, you know, they're doing movies now. I mean, Frankie and Johnny and um, they're doing quite a few TV shows and oh, movies. Yeah. 85 year old Sally Field and Jane Fonda and, um, they're all working freedom freedom Moran. films you know and and having the leads in them and it's wonderful to see this isn't it i, I love that i've always been a fan of jane fonda and lily tomlin i mean frankie and grace is awesome oh, but we talked uh marianne brought up earlier uh, 
or you may have Tina. What do y'all think about what Jane Fonda said recently? You know, you can be really old at 60 and you can be really young at 85. I think personally, I mean, I think a lot of that's genetics, don't you? I mean, someone at 60 has bad the bad luck of having some disease or having inherited something from their family that they can't help. And that's why they're old at 60, right? And you right. can be, and again, genes come into it. I mean, I'm 80, my husband's 85, and people look at him and think he's 65 because he does everything. I mean, he plays golf. He just does everything. And I I attribute that in part. His father and twin brother lived to be 98. So, I mean, there's a gene that made them fun all their lives and made them live long lives. I think a lot of it's genetics. I mean, if we're lucky, you and I, Marianne, are lucky enough to to be still alive and still feeling good, you know, and still being involved, being engaged, which is the most important thing. And I, I saw that with those aging tips I, I do. I saw how people engaged with them. I mean, are engaging with them and not necessarily because they knew me for from 30 years on a soap opera, but from just the fact that I was 80 and was willing to say, hey, I'm 80 and, you know, it's great. And, and it is great. There are things you have to give up. Like I don't ski anymore. I don't, I don't play tennis. I don't, I used to be a marathon runner, you know, 28, 26.2 miles. I now walk. I mean, there are changes, but they're not bad changes. They're just, no, you're, you're a different person. You I, just I, climb, you just climb Mount Kilimanjaro is all, you know, no big yeah. deal. <laughs> <laughs> well, I climbed, I climbed Anna, in the Annapurna Refuge, which was equally exactly. 20. Exactly. <laughs> but there's a good example. We were out in Basalt, Colorado, Aspen, at the Aspen Institute, and our kids lived out there. And it was fine the first few years. And last year, the altitude at 9,000, 10,000 feet really bothered us, so, my husband and myself. So we can't do that anymore. We know that that's part of getting older. At 75, it was fine. At 78 and 79, it was fine. And then all of a sudden, this year or last summer, we were just <gasps> and sleeping all the time. So, you know, there are changes when you get older, but that's fine if you just admit them. I was sitting next to a 96 year old man last night who swims every day and is in great shape and looks adorable. But his mind is kind of gone. And he said to me, he said, I said, now, who did you who do you play golf with? Because he's still playing golf. And he said, I can never remember their names, but he plays with them every Tuesday and Thursday, but he's out there and he says, I can't, but he said, but I'm 96. I just don't remember names. And that was wonderful. And how smart of him not to pretend, oh, I can't remember. But he said, I never remember any names. And then he looked at me and the girl, the woman who was giving the party, he said, you're both adorable. And then I heard him say that to another woman. And I said, he's 96 and he's flirting with other women after telling us we're adorable. <laughs> L ladies, look who just popped on. Oh, Everyone welcome. Okay, Mary yeah. Cheeto. Oh, yeah. She made it. Yeah. <laughs> Get of. me dinner up. Yeah. She's getting there. It always takes a few minutes. Why is she late? You know. <laughs> I don't but, know. I haven't talked to her. <laughs> but before we before she comes on, I just want to comment on something that, that you just said, Tina, because there is genetics, there's also epigenetics. You know, What's it's nat it, it, it's kind of it's like it's like nature versus nurture. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's like it's not just I, I'll give you an example. I remember there was a, a, a 60 minutes episode that I saw at, there was a, a group of nuns that were someplace cloistered somewhere. And let's just say the Netherlands. I don't know where they were. It was in Europe somewhere. And they were participating in an Alzheimer's study. And they there were things that they, they that they did every day. They had certain chores and things that they had to do every day. When they died, they did slices of their brains. And several of them, according to their genetics, genetically, they had Alzheimer's. Their brains had plaque and everything on them, but they never experienced it when they were alive because of the things that they were able to do. You know, you, it's like you can rewire, like you were talking about before, you can rewire different parts of your brain and continue living a life that they were not experiencing the symptoms of Alzheimer's. Although biologically they had... Um, they had the biological markers of Alzheimer's. Do you think that also, having been in convents most of my life, do you think that's because 
they didn't have to socialize with anybody except the nuns within each, you know, they knew the nuns, they knew when they would eat, they were, you know, it's, it's so regimented. Don't you think that would be mm. a lot of help for them? No, I, I don't, I don't know, but no, it had more to do with the fact that they, uh, they read, they socialized because so no, because I think that would be almost like a robotiz rob robotization of, you know, like that you just look to do this because you are regimented into doing that. No, it really had to do that, that with their social skills. You know, they were able to hold conversations with people mm -hmm. and then they just didn't, you know, nobody thought anything about them having Alzheimer's and, but they showed that their, that their, um, their brains showed that they had biologically they did so it's it's like we are genetically predisposed to a lot of things um but depending on our lifestyle or environment our mindset we can develop those things or not that's good to know <laughs> what you really say tim to, huh what? really good for me to know <laughs> i'm over here taking I'm, notes i'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look and i'm gonna look into those into hearing aids because i mean i can hear well, but sometimes I know that I'm missing some things. So why should, why should I? Well, yeah, because that's just the start of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, I mean, so if you get it early, that's even better. Yeah. See, I see a ear specialist because I was getting dizzy. I thought I had vertigo, but it turns out I have the Meniere's disease, which is different. Oh, but oh. but uh, thank you. Uh, it's, I'm, I don't have it really bad. I'm able to control it to a certain point like leaning on things when i'm standing up it makes it go away so i have little tricks to make but to the hearing you know i didn't know there was pressure he's like you got a really high pressure in one ear that they're monitoring but you know i had no right. idea right that's an you, know? you, you don't go to the hearing doctor occasionally i mean i'm 50 you know and i hear great i really do i mean so but it had not been for the Dizziness, yeah. no. I wouldn't have ever gone to get it checked out. Wouldn't know. Well, I'm going to ask a question. I know the answer to one of you, but uh, have you ever been cast as an older person any time in your career? <laughs> I was cast as Sidney Pollock's wife in the movie Changing Lanes. And I knew it was because I never had a facelift. I'd never done anything. So I looked like I could be his wife. I didn't look, you know, perfect or anything. And, um, he was probably 75 or at that point I was probably in my about 60, but I was cast as, as his wife because I looked older. There's no question. To Didn't me. they do that to you on Guiding Light as well though? No, I don't think it affected me on Guiding Light. Cause I know you oh. and Beth were really not, not close in age, but your oh, no, age proportion was different. 20 years apart. Oh, That's really? Something. Okay. I, th I thought that yeah, he had, they told you, made you older because they brought Beth on as older. No, they didn't make me older. I was older. I, I I played her mother in my 40s and she was in her 20s and then just on and on and on. But it, but they, you know, that was, I was going to be a mother of a 20 year old. So that made me that I don't, I don't think 40 is old. Although I just, <laughs> one story, one story. I remember when I was young, like in my 20s, and I was auditioning for commercials, and I saw this woman walk in, and I thought, what is she doing here? Honestly, why is she still doing this? And she was about 40, and I thought she was ancient, and I now laugh because here I am at this age, and, you know, I'm happy. I'm, I mean, I don't, I, if I saw someone who was 100 working, I'd go, good for you. You go, girl. Right. Um, <laughs> And I, and I guess I do my work now with my books. I mean, I get the, I write these characters all the time. And that's, that's, I, it's my way of dealing with age, probably in a very creative way. Or my well, agent. June, June Squibb is still acting and she's 93. Who? June Squibb. And, and didn't she, wasn't she nominated for an Oscar when she was yes. in her 80s? Or was she late, uh, seven, late 70, 80, 83? It's, it was just the last several years. Yeah. yeah. Was it? So she's 80s. Yeah. That's great. You were saying people in the 90s. I just thought I'd point that out because I knew that she was because I've been trying to get her on the show. <laughs> oh, Marie, is she here? Marie, if you can hear us, you're muted and your camera's on. on. We'd love to hear from you if you're uh, there. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so 
has your memory changed a lot? Because I know you all have had to learn a lot of lines over the years. I mean, a lot of lines. 72 pages every day, right? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, no, ours was a half hour show. So we were more like 50, 50 some pages. Mm -hmm. Although I did do Sunset Beach. I, I didn't, I wasn't in every scene, so it wasn't that bad. No, but, of course not. But I think it was, I think, don't you think, Tina, that having to do all that memorization using that muscle has been very helpful? I mean, I, I have a solo show. So people say, how can you remember doing, you know, 75 minutes of just straight but it's like anything else you lose, use it or you lose it. So I think once you, you know, it's like those nuns, you know, cloistered nuns, you, you keep using those parts of your brain and, um, and that's what keeps it working. That's what keeps it functional. So no, I, 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 my memory is pretty good, you know, for, memorizing lines and things like that. And I do speeches and I, I don't like to use notes. So I, I, I practice a lot. I, I use that part of my brain a lot. I think that's anything mentally, physically, you got to keep moving. You got to keep memorizing. You got to keep thinking. You've got to keep using all those parts of yourself. That's what keeps you, that's what keeps you young. Oh, something you said back earlier, I want to come back to about young versus old, I think we need to start changing the language. You know, when we say, like people say, oh, you're so youthful because I have a lot of energy in the way I, you know, comport myself. And I think, why should youth get all the good press? Yeah, I might be energetic and vibrant and vital, but that's not because of my youth. That's because of who I am as a person. <laughs> I know a lot of really dull, boring young people. So it doesn't have anything to do with their age. It has to do with their personality and their mindset. Wouldn't you I say? In, I don't mean to interrupt. Tina, I know you got to get out of here because uh, you have another appointment. We're coming back here. I'm okay for another 10 minutes. Okay. Okay. I just didn't want to cause Thank any you. issues. They're coming back here to pick us up. Hi, Maria. Uh, we can hear. I think we're going to be able to hear you now. We, your camera's still Hi. off, but we Hello. Yes, we can. There she Yay! is. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Well, <laughs> I've been trying to get on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my Lord. Okay. How, how are you doing, lovely? I am very embarrassed, and I apologize to everybody very sincerely. It's the time change. It does it. And I had to sort of look in there and, you know, PT means me, and I'm very, very apologetic. Well, you're it, fine. It happens. It happens. <laughs> well, you know, it could be worse. Like I did first, I was like, my third show, I had Jackie Zeman on. Oh. Perfect. It went, it, we went an hour, six minutes. It was like the best interview, even for her. She was like, oh, cut, take it to chat tape, everything. I forgot to hit record. <laughs> I love you. I love you. I forgot to hit her. Oh my, I was humiliated. I literally almost didn't continue doing this because of that. I was like, Miss Seaman, I'm so sorry. Oh my God, I'm so, I was so embarrassed. So don't feel bad. You know, it could have been worse, like my situation. But ladies and gentlemen, I really do apologize because I'm usually like, I'm, I have to check everything and make sure, make sure. You know, and my husband even said, do you want the extra light? And I said, well, no, it's not until 11. I am very sorry. Okay. Well, now. <laughs> we're good. We've all done it. All of us. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, well, I'll go to the next question real quick for, because Tina brought it up earlier, but we didn't really talk about it. What are your thoughts on surgery? I mean, I know none of you have had that. You're all beautiful, but. I, I, I think it's a mistake personally. I mean, I. I do too. I have friends down here. I had sat next to one at lunch the other day and she said something about, you know, I've had facelifts and I get Botox and she looked gorgeous. And I thought, hmm, but I'm just afraid of it more than anything. I mean, it, what if something went wrong? And you see these people where it went wrong and who were yeah. beautiful and no longer are. And I'm, all, I mean, I'm all for it if someone wants to do it. I think it's great. Poor Mickey Rourke right. is a good example. You know, he, they messed him up and he didn't need it but they messed him up and huh 
Who did they mess up? Mess up? Mickey Rourke. Mickey he went Rourke. in to have oh. facial uh, no, oh. facelift, and, and it didn't go good. It didn't turn out well, and they weren't able to fix it. And people who don't work anymore because their faces ruined it, and they were beautiful mm-hmm. and fabulous. This is crazy. Yeah. And I'm afraid that I'd wake up and all that stuff would be down up my ankles. <laughs> Giggling as I walk. You know? Well, I, you know, I, whatever anybody wants to do, if it makes them feel good, yeah, yeah. I figure okay. But I, I do think that sometimes plastic surgeons should be a little bit more judicious in just, instead of just giving them what they want, because I'm thinking, you let her leave, go out of here looking like that. You know what I mean? Because sometimes it just looks distorted. Of you course. know, when you get, when the lips don't move, you get that, you know, that joker, that those joker lips, you know, <laughs> face, that smile that just is horrible. Or, you know, <laughs> the eyes don't close. It's, you know, I, I'm with you. I'm kind of, <laughs> kind of afraid of it, but now. Do I moisturize and take care of my skin and, you know, do my little, uh, uh, you, you know, yoga things for my face? Sure. Absolutely. Vanity is my friend, I say, you know, I, I'm the vain thing, I, and I'm not, that's not going to change. But. The wonderful thing I've discovered is this microelectric treatments with a very, very mild electric massage that uh works the muscles in your face so that it's like going to the gym for your face and if your muscles are hanging on to your bones then your face is going to like stay in the same place for longer oh oh your face looks amazing marie oh you all look amazing uh uh, someone watching as asking if marie and tina have did y'all work together on search for tomorrow no No, I but so. I didn't have the pleasure, but <laughs> I look forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep searching for tomorrow. <laughs> Matter of fact, when I got searched for tomorrow. Betty Buckley, you know who I'm talking about? The singer, yes. Betty Buckley, who sang Memories. She was up for the part and she sent me a dozen roses. And she said, Tina, you keep oh, no, eight roses. She said, you keep searching for, uh, for tomorrow. Eight is enough because she'd gotten eight is enough when she didn't get searched for tomorrow. Oh, that's so funny. That. Oh, 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 that's, well, that's funny. That's kind of I did that's try to work. get her for the show, but she wasn't able to make it today. <laughs> no, I did. Now, I did. It's I want to go back to this question. She's We're, doing so many things right now. She is. She's crazy, is he? I'm going to yeah, re-ask a question since Marie's she just come on. because. What? She sent some pictures. I was going to re-ask a question for Marie because she just joined us and she sent some pictures about um, having to look older or younger for a role. Um, have you ran into that, Marie? Here's some pictures oh, yes. that you were talking about. Well, when I was very young in my 20s, I was cast as a, like a, a 45-year-old pregnant woman running across the country on horseback chasing my husband and we had to do you know <laughs> funny things with my head you know the things I have done for money uh but I I consistently that's my red oh. hair that's my red hair and I that's baskets you know that was just a couple of years ago but uh when I'm asked to play my age I wear the wig that I'm wearing now this is that wig and it's got gray pulled into brown hair. And I can act my grandmother age with this wig. Uh, it sells it better than with red hair. So I have the option of peer- maybe appearing a couple of years younger with red hair. And this is the wig when I'm, when I'm really pressed to, to look older. That's the wig I wear. Right. Isn't that funny? Yeah, well, you look really in all of them. <laughs> you really do. But we're actors. That's the whole thing. Whether it's wigs, yeah. hair, makeup, the costume, it's part of the costume. It's part of the character. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You should, I can use all the props I can get. Amen, sister. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have any aging tips that you would like to share? I mean, anything that would you think would help somebody else that's 
younger. And and back to what you said, Marianne, I don't like the word old and older either. That's why I chose maturing because we're all maturing every day. It doesn't matter what stage of life we're in. Well, I, you know, I really don't mind the word old, you know, and people, you know, I, you know, I like, you know, it's, I feel like, or, or that term, you know, ageless, I'm not ageless. I am age full. <laughs> I, I, I want credit for all of my 75 years. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I earned it. I showed up. I did the work. I'm, I'm age full. Um, and I, we, we, we need to destigmatize the word old. There's nothing wrong with being old. We're on a spectrum. There's youth, young, young, and then you, then, 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 then there's old, and what, that's not so bad. You know, I, I like, like, uh, people who are know, heavier. Oh, oh no, but okay. He has an appointment. Maria, it's great to see you for a moment. <laughs> bye -bye. Oh, wonderful. Bye. Thank you, Tina. Too. We still bye -bye. got plenty to talk about. <laughs> Boy, I, couldn't, I couldn't agree more, but you know, I think I'm 82, 82 years of age. I was born in 1940 and I just think it's a miracle. I mean, I've got friends who are not here anymore. So every day I get up, thank you, God, you know, it's wonderful to be here and to be still active and I'm taking Pilates and <laughs> The days that I don't fall off the reformer, is, <laughs> is, that's a win, you know. I did. I fell into the well and I was yelling, help, help. <laughs> she had to come and help, lever me up. <laughs> but by God, I'm really doing it. I'm and posi staying positive. And in these times, if you're not holding on to that vibration to stay positive, which is our main mission in this life, then you're just taking up space and working a mischief for everybody. We have to stay positive on the sunny side of this mountain, because otherwise we're going to be pushing up daisies. And I wasn't going to ask your ages or anything, but the three of you ladies. No, remember, a... say your age. We want to be loud yes, and proud right. about our age. Yes, Aging but... shamelessly. I, I'm a Southern boy. I was raised, you don't ask a lady's age. You just don't. But I was going to say, the three of you had a total of 212 years of experience, working experience together. <laughs> Wasn't individualizing anybody else, but that is incredible. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, amazing. I just thought y'all might want to hear that because I know y'all don't hear numbers very often like that. And we're still working. Yeah. It's I'm impressed. Working. I'm really impressed with that. You know, uh, <laughs> Speaking of which, I should plug the bay because I uh, that the um, it's a soap My opera that like you know, and I I I recur in this upcoming season eight. Um, well, you know what happened to uh, Christos's character? Uh, he's he's now two playing two characters. Oh, his oh. twin, his well, twin, evil twin brother. His evil twin brother. Well. <laughs> I am the house manager, and evidently I helped. I wasn't the nanny, but I was the the adult on site when the parents were away. Uh, so and so, um, it, it's very all very mysterious. My don't relationship answer, with him, with him, don't answer this. But and, uh, and, and so Peter. you're the reason we get to blame you. You're the like I said, don't answer because I don't want to run nothing, and I don't want okay. Gregory mad at me because Gregory's a good friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> so don't. <laughs> I'm not going to do that to anybody. Uh, Gregory and Wendy, I had Christos on a couple of weeks. Uh, I've got, a, I'm doing a big thing with them. I love getting all their characters on there because they're just it's incredible. Um, but yeah, I don't want well, Gregory mad at me or Wendy. Well, well I let's just say I have a connection between both Peter and um, Adam. Yes, it's Adam. Between, between the two characters. Somehow, and my character's name is Violet Givens. Does that give anything away to you? Yes, I know. Okay. I, okay. I, I don't. I know because I watch the show. I don't know because anybody's told me. That's why okay. I'm not saying anything. But okay, I know, but I, I know who you are. Then, then, I, then I won't say anything. And then, and then, as uh, Stephen Schnetzer and Maxwell Caulfield, uh, you know, we're kind of like we've got this thing. Going. It's very, it's very interesting. And I, they're just a bunch of fun people to work with and it was great getting into that soap opera thing again so yeah I we were just saying I was just saying Marie that 
it's like there was a drought like in my 50s and 60s. And now that I'm in my 70s, it's like, yeah, there's things are coming back around again. And I find it, yeah. it really fascinating and fun. Let's see what else I have to plug. I have to plug this. So they're coming. Um, I did a an independent sitcom pilot called Ben and Tony. And I when it comes to comedy, the thing that I love about this particular pilot is that with uh, Donald Watson and Dominic Oliver, I am the ex-wife of both of them. <laughs> and, and and they were best friends. We all went to high school together. But what I loved about this show is that, and, and I do this in my stand-up, I do not do self-deprecating humor about my age. Good. You know, I think that we need to celebrate getting older. I hate comedies where the the old purple older person is the butt of the joke. You can, then you're not a really good writer. You're not a really good comic. If the best you can come up with is making fun of old people. Yes. You know, get some better material. Yes. And also, uh, I like the idea that uh, an older person is doing something you never expected an older person to do. You know, right. I like playing those. And I bless the day that I came into the character uh, lady roles because those are the ones that have the most fun. And I have waited all of my life to play these character women. All of and my we're, life. We're going to have to try to get you on the bay as well, because it's a fabulous show. <laughs> and you're ta you're ta what you were just talking about, I had Charlotte Tilton on a few weeks ago, and she did a, a I think it was a Hallmark or one of those type of movies. Yeah. It probably wasn't Hallmark, but it, it's called uh, Heaven Sent. Oh, yes. And it, ah. It's got her and Karen Abercrombie. It's it's a good show and it's about older women, you know, older women because they're older. It's not, I mean, there's a younger character too. It's about two yeah. of them, but it's more about well, the older. Look at, and look at the I love Tom Brady movie with all mm -hmm. those lovely gals. 80 for Brady. Oh, wow. We're a hell of a lot of We're a hell Absolutely. of a lot of fun. You know, uh, we are. And it that's and but Hollywood has been slow to catch up with that. <laughs> now the interesting thing though is Madison Avenue has been a lot quicker, but oh, that's yeah. because they want those advertising dollars. Those advertising, you know, they they sell us a lot of stuff. Um, or they want to. I've never seen, have you noticed that there's more at commercials for medications and stuff? Oh. I I don't remember seeing that so much when I was growing up, but now there are medications I can't even pronounce. Well, who even know they advertise to the customers who then go say to your, you know, ask your doctor if you're right. But then they go, I want this thing. Well, how do you medicate through advertising? <laughs> it's just crazy. I'm not, I can't remember what medication it is. And I wouldn't have said it anyway, but it's a diabetic medic for diabetes, medication for diabetes that doctors are now prescribing to for a quick way to lose weight uh-huh oh and oh oh and that's as far as i'll go i, I kind oh, of figured okay. you would know what i was talking about <laughs> yes. but there, um, there's big ish a big issue of it coming up in the in the news and you know politically i guess you would say because you know it, well one of the good things about our industry is that if you get on a show you play that character through your years have you already talked about this no, no. Oh, I loved it because when I was younger, I had to hit my knees as a young girl and cry all the time. And I ruined so many pairs of pantyhose. Uh, but as I grew older, you know, you can you mature. Well, the characters you play mature, too. It's really wonderful. And I have. I'm, I've always known that I would have the biggest portion of my career as an older woman. So. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> well, I mean, you got to, I mean, as an older woman, uh, you've played in Baskets. You played yeah. in uh, Heart of Dixie. Has and Has oh Not, Heart of Dixie. I just love playing those characters that come in and say, well, if you saw it, why'd you step in it? You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I love John Has and Have Nots. I mean, that was one of my favorites <laughs> that you played. It's, I beg your pardon. 
Oh, speaking of hearing, hearing, this is a very interesting thing. I wear two hearing aids and it's fabulous because now on my telephone, when I talk, talk to people, I can hear it in my head. Because Were you on- I programmed it, I can hear it in my head. Your and- Bluetooth, is that what it is, Marie? Your Bluetooth? Hearing aid is Bluetooth. Her hearing aid. Yeah, it's a hearing aid. Exactly. And I can hear my (laughs) books on tape in my head. And when my husband comes in, I'm a potter also. When he comes into the studio and I'm working on something, he'll say, Can you hear me? You know, (laughs) (laughs) because I'm listening to my my book on tape as I'm working on my (laughs) Well, Marie, were you on when Tina was talking about hearing aids? Just got into the last part of it, but it's wonderful. And yes, when I had sudden hearing loss, bang like that, and I got up and I was enormously dizzy and uh, your hearing affects your balance, of course. So that's interesting. And uh, it's okay. Uh, You know, the next step, I'm sure, is those uh, Rush Limbaugh antennae on the sides of my head. Because uh, I uh, my hearing is pretty well impaired, but it's a virus that caused it. And I never went to loud concerts, but they say a virus causes it. Hmm. Wow. That was interesting. <clears throat> that is interesting. Um, yeah. <clears throat> what lessons have you learned about relationships, romantic and platonic, over the years? Oh, it's heaven. You know, I forgave myself. I forgive everybody else. You know, I can't be bothered with carrying grudges and all of that. It, it just, the relationships to live and let live, to allow, thank goodness I had a couple of tries of marriage before because now with my husband, we are so understanding. And if one's in a bad position, we bolster that person and we change sides. We just can't both be down at the same time, you know, <laughs> but, but we are, it's just fabulous to have this kind of acceptance, a, acceptance and forbearance of other people, a lot of other people, not even just your, your mate, or your, uh, but your friends also, although it's very difficult to be, um, on one side of an uh, of an opinion and other people you know if you're not of their opinion they don't want to be around you very much because they can't tolerate holding these two sides of an equation at the same time so (laughs) it's very strange (laughs) yeah some people just can't agree to disagree yeah they have to they you have to agree with them and i'm with you it's like I don't have a vested interest in your opinion. You, yeah. Everyone is entitled to their own. You know, yeah. I don't, I don't have to understand it. Yeah. It, it reminds me of, I, I was having a conversation with somebody about, uh, about empathy, you know, that we talk about, well, we should be able to empathize with the other person. Well, sometimes we can't, sometimes we've never walked a mile in their shoes. So we really can't say that we empathize, but we have to acknowledge and respect their experience, whether we understand it or not. But I think my understanding of that comes with getting older. Yeah, You know, the awareness and doing the work. I don't know know about you, but I, you know, whenever I've had issues, I've I've gone, I've been in therapy. I've worked stuff out, you know, and, and, there are times, and I think especially as, as you get older, you find your people, you find your village, you find your community. And I find that some people have drifted away. You know, that's just, it's just happened. Maybe there's just life. That's just just life. And then other people have come, you know, have come into your life. Like, like you, Marie, I've had a couple of tries at marriage myself. Um, And my, I had a partner who died. And mm-hmm. so now I'm, <clears throat> I'm in partnership with myself, I'd say, yes. you know, I, I, and, and I'm grateful for everything that I do have, but you know, in case there's somebody out there who's, you know, looking for, a, you know, <laughs> yeah. just get in touch with Tim. There you hey, go. Tim, I will... t- Tim, you can screen them out for me. I sure will. <laughs> I sure will. Absolutely. 
but to kind of what Marie was saying about, I mean, like I said, I am just now getting ready to be 51. And in the last five, six years, um, I've learned that older people like us, me and up, are able to handle relationships better, friendships yeah. better, um, because through the last couple of elections we've had, I've seen marriages break up because of it. I've seen oh, wow. years of friendships being divided. And I mean, me and my best friend has been best friends for well over 30 years. She is one party. I'm another party. You know, we might talk about it every once in a while, but we know that's just one subject that we just need to kind of stay away from because just because yeah. we're not going to try to change each other's opinion. You know, and, and there's no need to try to change someone else's opinion. And I think today that's where everybody's getting confused. They're like, no, no, no. You have to see it this way. It comes down to respecting the other person mm -hmm. and you have to respect yourself first and respect the other person as well. And that comes with maturity, I think. Yeah, I've matured a lot. I'm going to say that. And I think at my stage right now, there's a lot. I'm at that point where a lot of things are changing. Yes. You know, I'm shifting from one phase to another, and I'm actually seeing it happen. Whereas when I was younger, I didn't actually see it happen as it was happening. And so it's much is happening these days. Um, the bank failure, uh, we we're in very interesting times and it depends on the kind of internal fortitude you have and your faith in the outlook that you carry in your your vibration uh you have to hold the frequency of what you are and be firm in it because we're in shaky times yeah, and I would everybody, say that. and everybody, you have to respect everybody else trying to do the same thing too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. I agree with that, Marie. Totally. I mean, yeah. and the hardest thing I think is to hold on to the core of who you are. You know, which I think the basics: do unto others yes. as you would have them do unto you, and first, do no harm. Yes. To hold on to that when those around you are not. And they're coming at you. It's like, do you turn the other cheek? Do you, I think it, you learn to set boundaries and just do the right thing and do the right thing that is right for you and don't impose that upon somebody else because What's right for them may not be right for you. We walk a different path, but there's to the same truth. I think so. And I think I find myself being very quiet sometimes when I wasn't used. I wasn't used to doing that. So I just quietly let mm, go by, you know. <laughs> yes, I've become that way too. I used to be very mouthy, I guess you'd say. But I'm not now. I'm kind of like you were saying, I'm just... I'll listen. I'll like, mm -hmm, okay. Yeah. Right. I mean, I might not think it, that's your opinion. And that's great. You have your opinion. And I just don't like when somebody tries to impose it on me. That's yeah. when I'm like, well, you know, I think I need to go, you know, <laughs> I got to go to this grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> I have a friend who has a saying that she got from her grandmother. And she said, she says, sometimes, darling, you just got to bite your tongue at home. <laughs> that's great advice that's great advice that's great. <laughs> i love that yeah i'm gonna have to remember that yeah she's a, and she's and she's in texas too so she says it with a drawl sometimes <laughs> darling you just gotta bite your tongue at home oh how wonderful i'm a texan and i grew up in the country in texas and it was it was like if you don't like it hush <laughs> just hush <laughs> I can't remember who I had on the other day, but I threw him for a loop because I'm like, you know, I don't hide my accent anymore. Like I tried to in the beginning, but I do have certain words. And I was like, you know, I'm from the South. I say y'all. And he said, well, I say y'all. I said, no, I said, I say y'all. Y-A-W. Y'all. What are y'all doing? <laughs> he was like, what? And then the, he spelled, she spelled it out. She's like, okay, I had to spell it out first. <laughs> How y'all doing? Oh, that's funny. 
That's funny. That, that and eat your greens. Eat your <laughs> greens. Yep. Eat your greens. <laughs> Yonder. I, for me, it'd be eat your collards. Yeah. Collard greens. It's absolutely color. i have collards now in my garden i keep uh i've gone to raised beds because the gophers kept getting up and taking the plants down i watched them disappear so i now have raised beds and the benefit of it is that the soil is wonderful and you don't have to bend over as far and i have collards and mustard and all that stuff growing out right out there I'm I'm coming here. Wait, I'm, when are you inviting me over for dinner marie Okay. <laughs> and the, the big thing in our household was when we got the worm hotel. I have a big thing that looks like don't 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 make it bad because worm castings are the best fertilizer. I know. You know? And it looks like a big uh, uh, garbage can that you fill up with uh, compost, put the worms on top, and then you feed them with your, you know, coffee grounds and your garbage uh, out of the kitchen, your kitchen scraps. And it's and then the worm castings are down at the bottom. Oh, it's wonderful. Now, that's a sad thing when that's the biggest thing in your life that month. <laughs> Guana is too. Guana is good fertilizer too. That's bad. Bad. Uh, poop. Yeah, I didn't know how to put it. <laughs> now, I will say because I am on, grew up on a farm, my brother's actually raising our chickens. We have a chicken farm. Yeah. And um, they put, don't ever put chicken compost on your yard. If you do, you're going to be mowing your grass three times a week. Yeah. At oh, least okay. three times a week. Um, they did it on my son's yard before he moved in. <laughs> He's, that was six years ago. He's still mowing twice a week. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Do you still, do you still have that chicken farm? Oh, yes. We've got, uh, we raised for Purdue Farms. And uh, we are, and I'm very proud to say that because we are not like some chicken farms that they talk, that they talk about. Yeah. We are very, you know, very, actually, we have an education center with a, a plexiglass booth where they do tours for schools, for age, boys, uh, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, oh. to educate them to see, they can see in the chicken houses and see that they're not being mistreated. They're yeah. not being abused. There's not 100,000 chickens in one, you know, and that's why I'm not afraid to talk about it because I know our farm. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll take anybody out to see it if they want to see it. And uh, uh, Could I buy a sack of chicken manure from you? <laughs> <laughs> if I could get it there, if I could figure out how to get there, I'll give it to you because it has got crazy amounts up there. Lots yeah. of dry ice. Pack it in dry ice. I would say. <laughs> <laughs> Just hope it's not a cool day and not a hot day. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I'll ask you another question. Um, what are y'all proudest of at this point in your life that you've I, may I go first? Absolutely. I'm proud of holding on to my humanity, which was drubbed, drubbed into me. It, I came by it uh, with all of the mistakes that I made in my youth. I'm just so happy to be at the stage of my life with the health that I have and the forbearance that I have managed to obtain. and and to stand in Hollywood as a whole human being and still working. I'm really kind of pleased that I'm, I'm still here and I have a kinder spirit now than I used to have. I can't speak on Mary Ann's childhood. I can't touch on yours, Marie, because you've been on the show and you've talked about it. You didn't come from a very easy childhood either, though. No. So, you know, that says a lot about where you are. I yeah. Mean, yeah. It was difficult. My mother did the very best she could with what she had. But as a Creek Indian from Oklahoma with no education and no money and no way out, she managed to drag us both up and drilled into my head to get an education. And because of that, I was on national television and have been all of my life. And I cannot imagine the hardship she 
endured to be able to do that. And so I think education, especially that's, you know, in our, our, um, in our estate, that when everybody, when all, we're all gone, the money goes to education for Native American children, because that's the only way out for some people. I don't know if you watched 1923, but it, you, you should, it's very good. It does have an Indian girl in it and what they went through back in 1923. I mean, yeah. Yeah, well, that was sent to, that sent was to Catholic. I mean, if you're under a certain age, you had, were sent to forced to go to Catholic. You were Christian, stripped. not Catholic, Christian. You were, you were stripped of your culture. You were stripped of your language. You were stripped of your religion. And 1923 portrays that perfectly. This one girl, I mean, um, I can't think of, oh, I can't think of his name. He's, I love him. He we'll came from we'll General work. Hospital, but he plays one of the priests. He came from General Hospital, uh, Sebastian Brock, Brock, something like that. Well, look, but yeah. he's phenomenal in it. Yeah. He, he but my mother, <laughs> when mother came up, it was stinking Indian, and she told everybody she was Italian. She had darker skin and black hair, you know. So to get a job, she told everybody she was Italian. <laughs> wow, Marianne, what are you proudest of? Well, I, I'll just say, I'll just ditto what Marie said. No, I, <clears throat> actually, uh, growing up, I had a difficult childhood in as much as my mother was very smart. And I think today she would have been diagnosed as bipolar. Oh. And she was uh, biracial before it was popular. <clears throat> And uh, so she has brothers and sisters. She has uh, a couple of brothers, you know, who moved away from the family and they passed for white because it was so much easier for them. Uh, and so my mother, her nature was kind of towards me, at least abusive. And I think my proudest, um, my proudest, the thing that I am most proud of is that I decided that that abuse, the buck stops here. Good. And so I have a wonderful son that I'm just proud that I didn't mess him up, you know, too much. I don't think, you know, that I think I did a pretty good job as a mom, uh, considering the fact that I think there are some things that we were learning at the same time. You know, I was kind of, I, I was, I didn't have a role model on how to parent. So I was kind of trying to figure it out and say, well, let me do this. Well, what would I like? Well, I remember some of the things that were done unto me and I made sure that I wasn't going to do them to him. Uh, and he turned out pretty good. And now I have two fabulous grandchildren. And I, I'm really, I'm really proudest of that, that I was able to have a career and raise my child and do pretty good by both of them well you we were able to break the the i say habit but it's not really a habit you broke it from what your parent did to you you were able to break mm -hmm. that and, and that is something to be very proud of man you've got a couple of questions here uh uh oh chanel said marianne i heard I'd heard your comedy act you are good but do you think that they will have a full edge of night reunion um I don't know. I'm, I'm. Well, if I could get a couple of you, I, could, I would be happy to try to have one on here as much as we could. Well, uh, well, I keep in touch with their share and I could probably, let's work on that. Let's work on I, that. Let's work on that. I, I did um, a podcast with, uh, with Sandy Faison and Jennifer Taylor and Karen Needle. And then I think uh, Sharon Gabbett did one with um, Terry Davis and Francis Fisher. Well, but maybe you could get on. all the women from Edge on. That would be let's great. Let's do it. We'll just, let's, let's, do it. let's have a Brit like the like uh, the Brady Bunch. We'll fill up all those little squares. Uh -huh. Absolutely, Marie. Huh? Uh, the same person said, "My mother used to watch Search for Tomorrow when it was on oh. Channel Two for years." What do you think is going on in Henderson? 
Uh, I, I actually don't know, but boy, <laughs> would it be wonderful to do a show with Lynn Herring. Let's do it. Uh, okay. You too. Let's because do it. I was hired to be her crazy aunt. And that's where that, if you saw it, why just step in it? You know, but that was that character. And she was marvelous to work with. Just marvelous. Well, she's a rancher and a, and a cowgirl and a horsewoman and a mother. And, you know, it's, it's, she's just great. <laughs> yes, she is. And Tina, um, Tina, I'd like to work with you. You're marvelous. Oh, Tina had to go. She's not on here now. Oh, I'm sorry. It's Marianne, isn't it? Yeah, Oh, Marianne. it's me. It's me. I'm so sorry, sweetheart. I would like to work with you. Well, let's yeah. let's make that happen. There would like to be fun. Let's do that. Uh, same, same person has a question for you, uh, Marianne. Do you think, what do you think is going on in Monticello? <laughs> well, I think Louis Van Dyne, you know, came in, took, came back, took over everything and everybody's walking around like, no, I'm kidding. Um, I, well, you know, when, when last we saw, uh, Dee Dee was pregnant and I think uh, that, that she had a son and Calvin Jr. is now the, the mayor of Monticello. There you and, go. And, and, and I'm his campaign manager. Oh, that's it. And I'll end, it on, I'll end both, the, wrap it up for both of you on this one. Um, and, and, and Raven started a candy company. There you go. <laughs> and if you want to know more, just pay attention, subscribe to this channel because we're going to have a reunion. You can ask everybody that attends the reunion. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Just okay. tell people to hang on. <laughs> hang on. <laughs> oh, and the gentleman I was talking about, uh, David, let me know it was Sebastian Roche. Oh. oh. Okay. He's in 1923. He's he's the evil preacher man. <laughs> oh, those but characters yeah. are so much fun to play. I think, Maria, if you watch 1923, you'd like it. It's this. Oh, it's a prequel to Yellowstone, which you don't have to watch it to know what's going on. Just oh, pick it up wherever it is. Oh, good. I I love to play evil characters because you get it all out of your system, and you don't have to go home and kick the cat. <laughs> Oh, you wouldn't do that anyway, Marie. I know no. you wouldn't. <laughs> David said Aunt Charlene was the best. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Betty Breland uh, and on the Heart of Dixie. I just love to play those characters who you know, like are are powerful and they can say what they want. Oh, that's another thing. Say what you want to say and don't care what people think. <laughs> that that's what, you know something, Marie, it because I, I played a character like that on Designing Women. I played Anthony's yuppie from hell girlfriend, Lita. Yeah. Lita, I'll be waiting in the beam report. I think what, I think what, because of who you are as a person, yeah. who I am as a person, I think we're able to give some humanity to those characters. Yes. You know, you know so that it's like the characters that people love to hate because they, you know, because you know that somewhere back in their child or something, something happened to them because, you know, the, you can bring the humanity to it. That, yes. That's that's what the fun of, of, your, of being an actor, when yes. you can, when it's not clear the villain, yeah. you know, there's a little good yeah. in the bad people, bad guys, and there's a little eh, in the good guys. That's right. And as Stephanie Wyatt did all the wrong things, but for the right reason. Well, look at Miss Pearl. Oh, Miss Pearl. Oh, God love has Tyler and have Perry. Nuts. God love Tyler Perry for, for giving me Miss Pearl. She did all the wrong things, but for the right reasons, you know. Yes. She knew what was going on everywhere on her street or across her street. She knew everything that's going on, murders and oh. all. <laughs> uh, well, 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 Marie, since you've got an in with Tyler Perry, I think you should he should come up with something for you and me, do you think? Oh, what a great idea. Ooh, yes. Oh, what a great oh, idea. I like that. Just for uh, me. Marianne, Tyler, who did you listen? Go, I'll go write him a letter. Yeah. Marianne, yes, who did you play? Who did you play on Guiding Light? And no, she did not work with Lillian. We no, talked about I that a little earlier. I played Dr. Grace Battles. Uh, I was Johnny Bowers' oncologist, you know, and uh, and I had a lovely time. 
You know, they knew me because I was in the Procter and Gamble stable. They called me up and they said I was in California at the time because Edge was canceled. I moved to California. They called me up and I came and I did the show, but I was non-contract. And I think there there had been a writer strike in L.A., but the writers had negotiated their contracts. Pilot season was coming up. I said, either I can't live in New York City not knowing when I'm going to work. Yeah. And so either it's contract or I'm going back to LA. I went back to LA. And uh, about a year and a half later, I ended up um, as a, ser- a series regular on the Royal Family with Red Fox and Della Reese. They played my my parents. So, Wonderful. you know, things work out. They go, you know, that's why, that's the wonderful thing about about getting older. I almost feel like I've watched so much history and I've watched the yeah. world change and things have happened. And sometimes I've gotten kind of like, Ooh, we're not going to go there. And then, you know, we, we bounce back. So I'm just, I want to live to be really, really, I'm planning on getting into triple digits because I want to find out what's going to happen. I'm just a nosy little bugger. And just, just yesterday I was going into Hollywood for an audition and I passed uh, on the Highland, I passed the place where I worked as a receptionist secretary. Mm-hmm. And, you know, what would you say to your former self? I would say, hello, Marie, don't worry about it. It's going to work out. It's going to work out. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, David says the Erica's Ravens Dorians. I'm not sure what show he's talking about. How many people who are in the Procter and Gamble stable and what was it like working with Red Fox? Is he as funny as Fred Sanford? Oh, Jesus. With, oh. With, with Red, what you see, what you saw was what you got. I was hired for the role. Um, and the first time I met him was at a our, our photo shoot at CBS. And so... You know, I was asked to bring a bunch of, you know, clothing from home and then they had some things, but I brought this, they put me in this Laura Ashley dress, which is actually my dress. And this is 90 in the 90, 90, 91. And so, you know, we had those long, and so we're lined up and everything and Red looks over to me and he said, can't we get her something else to wear? And I said, well, Red, this is my dress. And he said, well, shit, let's take up a collection and buy you some clothes then. <laughs> he did not approve. And he said to me, and I've never gotten, he said, this is show business, baby. You got to show him something. He said, you got a nice shape and everything like that. He said, do something. They made, he made them pin the dress up in the back so that I looked, so they could show my body. And then they did that. And then he said, okay, that's, he said, then he said, and can't we get her some socks or something? They did. They said they got some socks and they, you know, to give me, uh, you know, yes. <laughs> um, and so when we, when we went to the sh- show, he used to tease me. He used to say, you know, only $1,500. I could buy you some talking about having plastic surgery. And, uh, and so one day, he used to tease me so much. I had this the, the scenic department build out like a 48 quadruple D <laughs> fake chest and they had it the right color and everything like that. And and so we were shooting near the end of the, the show. He was ill. So we would make sure that we we would shoot the dress rehearsal to get a clean a clean tape and then just another uh, one sh- one show, <clears throat> excuse me, in front of a studio audience as opposed to two shows. So it was dress rehearsal. Della's character is supposed to come through the door. And she says, you know, okay, Al, that was this character's name. Al, I need some help with these groceries. And and so he gets up out of his chair and he turns around and it said, I go through the door and then I had this breakaway blouse and I went, da-da! <laughs> and the, the camera guys did were not in on the joke. So they kind of like, what the hell just happened? And and he just went, ah, and Della, said, he couldn't say anything. He was almost like the friend, he was like this. <laughs> Uh, and Red said, and Della said, she got you good, didn't she, Red? <laughs> the next week, 
But the next week he had a heart attack on the set. And I thought maybe it was just too much for him. But he died with a smile on his face. Oh, wow. dear. Oh. So that's true. That's true. true story. What a so. great story. <laughs> great story. Sure. And, and great people. I mean, Della Reese, come on. I mean, him oh. alone, but Della Reese. <laughs> oh, Della, Della was, she, you know, she was a, a, a minister. She was, yeah. a, meaning to be, and so she would have a Bible study in her dressing room. Oh. And she was just amazing. Sometimes there would be some tension on the set with, with the producers. And she would sometimes, she would grab me by the hand and say, come on, we got to stay prayed up today. And we would, you know, it was, it was really um, a wonderful experience. I've, I've been blessed, you know, to work with some, some fabulous people. I know her best from Touched by an Angel because my, my mom watched it religiously, so. Religiously touched by an angel. Ha ha ha. Little joke. Oh, sorry. Didn't mean the, that pun. The, no, no. The, the comic in me is going to. Look at those lines. I, my brain don't work that fast. I would have caught it later on. I'd be like, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, Marie, we need, to, we need to try to get you on uh, the bay because it's filmed right there in California where you are. So you wouldn't have to go far. Hot dog. Yeah. <laughs> well, ladies, I won't keep you all any longer i have had so much fun today with you all on here thank you for being here both of you ah uh, thank you tim this has been great and I, I feel like i've made two new friends today with with tina and now with you marie and tyler if you're listening excuse me <laughs> we are we not next door neighbor best buds waiting to happen i'm just saying okay yeah marianne uh i won't take offense to that how wonderful <laughs> she made two, she made two new friends did you catch that marie <laughs> but you know what tim i kind of feel i feel like i've already known you because i came on early we have yes, bonded already we have we, we, we go way back at least 20 minutes before me and marie. <laughs> <laughs> way back <laughs> way back at least 20 minutes <laughs> oh god <laughs> i love you <laughs> If you ladies want to make a list of names, we could do the reunion show. It started on it. Uh, let me know who y'all want on it, and we'll get together and see who we can contact, who we can get in touch with. Because I know a lot are. of subscribers and fans want to. Because I've had two. I had one with all my children, and then I had one with Guiding Light. And it was, it was everybody. There were more people that tuned in live than any of my other shows on the reunion what a great shows. Great idea. They, they yeah, love the reunion shows. It sounds good. And I love it because I don't have to do much talking like I didn't today, which I love. <laughs> <laughs> God bless you, honey. God bless you. This is a wonderful opportunity and how wonderful to meet good people. Absolutely. As I've never had, I, I can say this, I've never had a bad person on the show. Knock okay. on wood, but I've never had a bad person on the show. Now that won't, that's well, that, speaks have, to you. that speaks to you, Tim. That, that doesn't say how it ran into a couple of publicists that don't oh. care for me, but you know, <laughs> we oh, won't name names. <laughs> well, I appreciate y'all being here and taking the time. And like I said, let's get this going. We'll get these reunion shows going. Anytime y'all are, just y'all both have my email. Marie, you have my number. Okay. I'll send it to you, Marianne, if you want it. Well, actually, you I was going to say, well, email. I don't have your no Okay. I guess yes, you do. It's on my email. Send an email. It's an email. <laughs> <laughs> so let's make it happen, ladies. Thank Sounds you. Like a plan. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank Have you. a good day, Bye, everybody. Sweetie. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I'd like to thank all of the ladies today. This is such a phenomenal show. I want to thank Tina Sloan, Marie Cheatham, and Marianne Alda for being here. Uh, I want to remind everyone, season eight of The Bay will be coming out soon, and it's going to have Marianne in it and a lot of other people. I know I can't wait to watch it, for sure. Uh, I'll keep you posted on any information I get on that. I'd like to thank the NFF for sponsoring our show. For more information on necrotizing fasciitis, please visit www.neckfasci.org. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel for upcoming episodes, reunion shows included. Remember, 